Hi guys, in this video we're moving from our design drawing stage to developing a pen version which has got chunkier marks and will eventually take us to the design and the print. So I've dug out a load of different types of printing for you and here we have a lino by a pupil, a design by a pupil that I've cut in a much finer way just as a demonstrator and this one I've got some reference material for a wren and then this very detailed wren. Now this is using a much smaller cutter than the one we have here that you will be using. You can see the marks are very, very small. So the marks you will be making are more like this one. If you look at the width of the blade and the marks, you can see the cut marks. If I show you the liner, the liner you will use is gray. The liner I have used here is brown. That's the only difference. So you can see these lines cut into here. If I come around and demonstrate, I've literally put the tool in and carved in. We'll show you how to do that later, but I want to show you the type of marks you will be making as you move through to your design. So what I have here is an owl drawing and it's the size of the lino that I'm going to work onto. And I'm looking back now at the artist's work to get some ideas about finalizing the design. Now you're gonna cut the design using a lino cutter out of the piece of lino. Now the type of mark you're going to get therefore is slightly wider than the pencil line which is why we draw in a pen. When I draw I tend to use a chunky broad pen like this and you might want to have several goes at this to get it right. So what we can do if we're in school is photocopy your drawing and then you'll be able to modify and try on different things. If you were working at home you might put it on a window and trace the image so you have multiple copies. So. If I'm thinking about where I want to cut, the area I cut away will become a white line, a removed section, because we put ink onto the lino and it will go onto the surface. So anything cut away is like a negative that will infer a positive later. It's a very tricky thing to think about, but eventually this will make sense when you've gone through the process. Now I'm looking at this one in particular to influence my design. There are some sections on here where it's a bit plain, like on the chest. I might just put some textures in that are quite straightforward. If I want this to look three-dimensional, I might put lines that are suggesting volume and wrapping around. If you remember from last year, in our drawing work when you're suggesting volume you can use contours, flat lines will look flat, rounded lines will suggest volume. So with the artist's work beside me and the chunky pen in hand what I've decided is I want the centre of the eye to be a nice round circle. I'm then going to work around the outside of the eye but I want to leave the colour of the eye, the iris of the eye, a colour. So I'm just going to work around it I want the other one to be a similar scale, so I'm drawing the circle about the same scale. Just work on it carefully to make it more rounded and then do a similar thing around the eye. Now this has got to be done systematically. That sort of looks like it'll do the job to me. Now the big question next is, is the beak going to be white or is it going to be dark? Am I going to cut it away or am I going to leave it? If I look on here, in this one he's cut half away like light is coming from this side. In this one, it's completely cut away. I think I'll cut it away. So for that to be cut away, I will leave it, but therefore I need to do dark around it. So in the areas around it, I'm going to have to do a dark section. Now, because I've got these circles around the eye, these discs, I'm going to draw the circle. Now, if I don't want to necessarily fill it black, because I like the radial lines that I've seen in this work and in the Wideman that we looked at as well, you may have looked at other imagery, reference material and have alternative ideas. You don't have to do it in this way. So I'm drawing the line, but remember I'm making it slightly chunky. Notice I've turned the image around a little bit so I can draw it without smudging it. To be honest, it doesn't matter too much if you do smudge it, but it just looks a bit neater if you don't. Now, if I want to put lots of teeny weeny little lines in it, I have to remember I'm going to struggle to cut it with the lino blade. So I'm going to have to think about what's realistic and how I'm going to do it. Now remember, if I'm drawing and I want them to radiate from the centre of the eye, imagine that's a circle, this is the centre point, I'm going to draw lines on the axis, on the poles, at 12, 3, 6 and 9. 
or north, south, east, west, whichever way you want to think of it. Now the way, if I'm wanting them regular, I then divide it in two. If I want it another line, I'll go divide again. So I can generate something that looks fairly regular rather than it looking a little ad hoc. Remember, I don't really want to work in the pencil. I want to work with a pen so it's chunky and it's a little bit more like the type of mark I'm going to make. Even if you don't follow the drawing exactly, at least the lines are doing what you want them to do and be radial. When you come to cut it, you're going to be slightly different again. So I would do the same thing on the other eye because it's the owl's face would want a degree of symmetry. So the eyes have been drawn in. The next thing I'm going to think about is maybe the top of the head. If I haven't worked out what I want to do, I could have a solid section of colour or I could look back at my reference material and decide this owl's got some texture on the top of it. I might go for some texture. Now, if I'm cutting it away, remember the bit I'm cutting away, I'd leave white. So I could think about this in different ways. So what I've done is I've drawn the boundary around the edge of the image. So there's something defining the edge of the owl's head and the background. Now I've used tracing paper to do this and I've traced that section with a pencil and then I've drawn some marks onto it. So I've drawn marks on and here what I've done is I've sort of filled it in leaving some white flecks and I can see in these two different ways which one I prefer. Now the one that's actually easiest to cut, believe it or not, is the one where the little bits are cut out, the white areas on here. So those are just cut out, whereas in this one, I would be going around and cutting all around those sections. So I might opt for this. I also think it's a little bit plainer than that one. It might stand out, make these eyes stand out even more than they do currently. You can obviously do something else as well, but it's worth starting to think about the positive and negative and what you're cutting away and what you're not. So I might do it in a way where I do some sort of blocks in a pattern. And then do some filling out around them so that there's little gaps and dots that sort of fit along with this. Now when you cut, you can modify again. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. You can see I'm working it out as I go. So what I've done on the top of the head doesn't necessarily have to be exactly like the below the head, but I'm going to do something similar to make it, the head stand out. I will want to join the head and the body and blend them in some way so it doesn't feel like one is handled in a completely different way to another. I'm thinking about the density and distribution of the marks that I'm putting in, that it's fairly even. I could have more at one side and make it look brighter or I could keep them fairly regular. So I've gone for a fairly regular look here. So in theory, the more black you have, the less cutting out you've got as well. So think that through as you're doing it. If your design is predominantly white, you've got a lot of cutting out to do. As you're printing, you'll be able to modify your cutting as well. So whilst the head is done, I want to think about the chest now and the wing. I might go to the wing first. Originally, I had a very smooth line down the back of the wing, but I have looked at this one again and I'm thinking I quite like the jagged feathers. So the first thing I'm gonna draw in with my thick pen is a slight bit of texture. But I want the wing feather to be coming out and be quite pointy. So I'm going to do something similar to that coming up. I'm having mine one big sweep of a line. He's got a section here and a different bit there. Now I've got these lines into it, I'm going to stick with those. But remember, if there's a lot of white, I've got a lot of cutting out to do. I'm trying to reduce the cutting out I have to do. And I have to think how I'm going to do that. So in here, he's got a solid fill with a white line. I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make these lines thick and dark with a white line in between. So I'm doing a bit of a fill in sections. Remember, if you're working on paper, you can, got, you can have photocopies and you can try different options. We can stick pieces of paper back into it and try something on another piece of paper over the top as well. Now, to make these feathers stand out, if I colour them in black, I won't see them, so I need to leave a little bit of an edge or a boundary again. So I might just do exactly that. See how I'm 
filling in and leaving a little edge. I'm going to do something similar on the one above. Sometimes you have to work it out as you go, train, change something because it doesn't make sense to you. Like what am I going to do here? Maybe I need another feather shape, which means I have to connect that. I have the line there, maybe I need to connect that. So the head doesn't feel like it's a completely separate thing. I've just said that I'm going to try and have like, these sections joined together. So you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just putting these little feathers in. I'm keeping the shape. I'm becoming more confident. Now I've started, I've got a bit of better idea about how I'm going to handle these things. If you're really struggling, we can let it dry. And I mean dry because this is a water-based pen and there's a lot of ink on it and you will get smudges and marks off it. When it is completely dry, we can go back into it with a white material like a Posca pen or a Tippex pen or even collaging to put put highlights back onto it. So if it's too dark, don't worry too much about that. Again, I want to work on the chest. I somehow want to blend the two, but I don't want it to feel exactly the same. So I'm going to think about the marks there. I'm thinking the tail feathers I might handle in a similar way to have handled the long flight feathers on the wings, these long ones here. So I'm just going to do this first. And again, if I connect all the way up to the wing, the wing won't stand out. So I'm going to leave a little white line along the front of the wing. Whatever I do on the chest, I want to make that wing stand out. And on the chest, I might go for similar marks to these, maybe. But I might do as little dashes. Remember, I've already told you about the directional line. Even if you do it with straight lines like I'm doing here, I'm suggesting volume and the texture of feathers. It's not as pretty as the one over here and there's not enough as much range in there but it's working reasonably well this pen is beginning to run out a little bit it's gone a little bit patchy but it's not really stopping me what i'm doing because this is a design stage for the moment i'm going to make the the feet almost like a silhouette shape if you're struggling with the feet we might look at some extra reference material so you might be talking to your teacher about how to do that you might do it and make the claws separate. He's got quite good claws. I'm putting better claws onto my owl. You can see those claws just there. So I've just put a bit of a boundary in around the edge. Remember, in lots of things, we don't draw a boundary. In this, I just want a clean edge because it's going to have to be a cut line. And I'm happy with this design to transfer on the next video, transferring techniques to lino.